Hey guys, Let's Communications back again, this time with another review. This time with another movie that I've reviewed before that I wasn't quite that quite fond of, just like The Rescue, and that is Let's Get Harry. Now, I ended up checking this one out. Actually, I ended up watching it off Amazon Prime which they had it on um, streaming. Um, so on the really good quality, uh, but too bad that I can't, you know, get that good of quality on DVD. Nope. So the closest I can get to this movie getting good enough quality is on this Laserdisc of Let's Get Harry. And yes, that is Robert Duvall, Gary Busey, Mark Harmon, and that guy with the mustache who just looks like an extra, that's Glenn Frey. You know, the singer. You know, the guy who's saying, uh, I think he's saying the heat is on. I think so. I think he's saying that from Beverly Hills Cop. I know he's saying at least, he, he sang some songs from the Beverly Hills Cop soundtrack, along with a few other soundtracks from the 80s, as well as some stuff from Miami Vice. Um, and he makes his acting debut with this movie. Let's Get Harry is a film from 1986, and it's also known as The Rescue. <laughs> yeah, aka The Rescue. And this is definitely an R-rated movie. This is this is like this is the uh, more hardcore version of the rescue, I guess. Um, and this is a movie that I was I've always been curious about. I was curious about it for years, and I finally went around and saw it a, a, a couple years ago, and I wasn't impressed. This time around, though, I don't know. Just like the rescue, I, I guess the second time around, it was it was just. You know, expectations were low this time around, and uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, just like The Rescue, though, it's not, it's not a perfect film. It's not flawless. There are some problems. The same issues that I had with it, some of the same issues I still have with the movie, uh, namely Robert Duvall and what happens, you know, to his character. Uh, but at the end of the day, it wasn't enough this time around for me to hate the movie. And I think the movie actually is a really underrated flick. It really has a decent amount of action. Uh, it's not realistic. Who gives a shit? I'm, I'm not looking for realism. This is, If you pop in Let's Get Harry, you're not watching a movie for realism. This is a movie where uh, Mark Harmon plays this guy named Harry. He's a plumber. He's working over in Columbia somewhere. And he's... he's you know, also doing some stuff for the American ambassador, and what happens is these terrorists, these you know terrorist guys, these drug de Colombian drug dealers come in, you know, with masks and shit, like not Halloween store masks or anything, just you know they got turbans over their head or something or, or a ski mask, and they kidnap the ambassador and Mark Harmon, and so now Mark Harmon's buddies back in uh, Chicago in Illinois who are these steel worker guys, these blue collar guys, uh, decide they're going to band together and uh, go to Columbia and s get Harry. And um, they end up hiring a, uh, well, they have a fun scene where they try to, What um, anyway, it, what really makes the movie for me this second time around, it's, it's just an enjoyable movie and it's very unique because you have this, this the, you have this unique eclectic cast of characters. We have Gary Busey, who plays this uh, Jack, who's this car dealer. You know, this car. He's the owner of this car dealership, and he's a character, totally a Gary Busey character, and he's a lot of fun to watch, and um, even has some more memorable lines of dialogue. I thought, like near the end, where he's dealing with the the, the main bad guy. Even the villain is is different. He's kind of a shrimp of a guy, but I thought he was actually a decent enough actor. He kind of first time around, I wasn't impressed. Second time around, I'm like, you know what? He's unique. He's different. You know, I've seen a lot of the run of the mill type of typical bad guys. This guy at least has got some charisma about himself. He's unique looking. He's a shrimp, but you know, he's a drug dealer. He doesn't have to be some six foot tall motherfucker. So anyway. Uh, so I like the line of dialogue Derek Busey has. He's like, you know, hey monkey, I'm gonna put your head on a stick. <laughs> now come back here, monkey. I'm gonna put you on a stick. Stick right. <laughs> so it doesn't really sound like much. It's just the way you know the way that he says it. You know, the line doesn't sound like much, but it's just the the way that Gary Busey says a line that's fun. And this is a film that it really did tank. It did terrible.
when it came out in 1986. And even the director disowned it. The, you know, it says Alan Smithy, but the actual director is Stuart Rosenberg, the guy who directed the Amityville Horror. And he didn't direct another movie for years until 1991, where he directed another movie, which would be his last, until he passed away, sadly, in 2007. I don't see enough of anything for him to disown the movie. Now, possibly it could have been that it wasn't the version of the film he wanted. Maybe stuff was cut out. Maybe the studios got involved. I don't know the whole story because you can't find anything trivia related or anything related to this movie other than uh, it had an episode of Psych that was inspired by the name called Let's Get Harry, spelled with H A I R. Why? And it's also starred, uh, you know, the, the the episode guest starred, F, you know, Thomas F. Wilson. Which was fun to actually see that. Uh, Thomas F. Wilson um, was, uh, you know, he has a bigger role in this. It's nice to see Biff, and, you know, have more, more to do. Even though he's kind of a wimp at first, but then he eventually... You know, he talks the talk. He's the type of character that talks tough, but when the going gets tough, he, he shits, shits his pants, shits the bed, and goes, ah! gets all tensed up. And he's actually the reason why Robert Duvall dies, because he's a puss. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that. I don't like that part of this movie. That part of this movie, the way that's handled, is just enough to knock it down from, you know, a, a really good film to just a above average movie. It, it, it could have been a good movie, but now it's just an above-average film because you kill, you know, the best character off in some bullshit way. Because some guy's a pussy, you can't pull the trigger! Damn it, Biff! Anyway, you butthead! Anyway, um... So you have Gary Busey, you also have, you know, Mark Harmon, who, who plays Harry, and he's a gruff, take-no-prisoners type. He gets taken prisoner, but every time they try to get information from him every time I've prayed him out you know in front of the drug dealer guy the drug dealer guy's trying to talk shit to him he's, he's not taking anything and um, and then you also have uh, Glenn Frey is, is Spence yes Glenn Frey in his acting debut and he's not much of anything really like he's he's there but like his acting like like you know the lack thereof <laughs> This is not really a good actor by any means. You have Rick Rosovich, who uh, is in this as well. Uh, Rick Rosovich, uh, he plays he plays an even bigger wimp. Then I'm like and I'm like really shocked because I'm like this is this is Slider from Top Gun. What are you doing being a fucking bitch? You were also in Navy Seals. What the? F Come on, Rick. <laughs> You know, Rick, Rick Rosovich, I know you can do better than this. To watch him be this pansy-ass character who literally just is a whiny little... You, you, eh, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to Columbia. I don't want to save Harry. They got to guilt trip him into coming along. And then he doesn't... And he ends up going back home when the, when the shit starts to hit the fan. Because he's a bitch. Um... <laughs> Uh, but then you have Michael Schofling, who is not a the master thespian either, who is uh, Harry's brother, Corey. And he's got had, has some moments, but like I said, mainly I enjoyed the movie for Gary Busey and Robert Duvall. And, uh, you know, F Thomas F. Wilson. And, uh, you know, Michael Schofling was just a pretty face, pretty much. And uh, Mark Harmon was it had only had a little bit of a little bit, but really mainly I thought Robert Duvall's character Shrike, who's this um, uh, mercenary for hire guy that they ended up hiring uh, to help them, you know, plan, you know, get a plan together and a game plan to have a, uh, an experienced guy to the to, to lead them on the mission to save Harry. And. I really like Robert Duvall's character. I thought the way I liked the way his attitude. I liked the way he was portrayed. I liked Duvall's performance. I it was kind of he was pretty much a badass, um, and he, he was smart. He was intelligent. You know everything that Robert Duvall character you know t should be. You know he rocked a, a Yankees cap like a boss. And, and you know it's really he had this one scene where these two muggers try to make some. You know, try to cause trouble with Michael Schaffling, I think, and Thomas F. Wilson, and 
you know, and uh, he makes quick work of these muggers, beats the shit out of them with, I think, like a baton, and, you know, fuck, fucks them up, which I was pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, overall, I really like Robert Duvall, and, I, and I, wish I, I wish I knew more lines. There actually were some pretty funny lines of dialogue in this film, unlike The Rescue. Um, but I can't find them anywhere, and I, I saw the movie, like, three days ago, so forgive me, like, I don't really remember too much... But the film is available in like iffy quality on the free archive, you know, dot net. So you can see it that way. I think about like re ripping my laser disc because I did that one time, but I think I can do a better job than I did the last time I did it. Um, that way you can have a better, well, the best quality other than a VHS rip. It was better than that other uh, copy of this film that's available online, which is like some. One recorded off cable on some foreign channel, which has like foreign subtitles all over the bottom of the screen, and they're really big subtitles. They're not tiny subtitles, so it is very distracting. Um, but anyway, so I wish I could remember a little bit more lines of dialogue, but I, I can't for the life of me. Everything Gary Busey calling the 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 uh, drug dealer guy, uh, you know, uh, a monkey. It's like, I'm going to put your head on a stick. Uh, uh, but this is, Gary Busey had fun with him. And um, and Robert Duvall had, a, had, a, had some fun moments too. But I just, I just cannot remember any lines of dialogue for some reason. It, it wasn't that they weren't that memorable. A lot of them, you know, there weren't that many great lines. But there were some fun lines that, you know, I got to chuckle out of. But I just can't remember them for the time being. Uh, but anyway, uh, so pretty much it is what you think it is. It's uh, Robert Duvall, uh, you know, a fun line. I like the sequence where the, the guys try to hire a, a gun for hire guy and they have like a bunch of, you know, you know, absolute like losers that show up for, for the tryouts, so to speak. You know, one guy, it's, it's, he's addicted to drugs, popping pills. And he's just like, oh, wait a second. Well, I popped some more pills. Some other guys obviously a lunatic. Some other guys like a is an out. He's a, he's he's drunk. Another guy says he, he's got like a bandana on his head. It's like a black guy. I think he's got a bandana on his head, and he's like, "Call me Rambo." <laughs> and then there's like one guy who who's like he's like this really. Uh, he looks like he knows his shit. Like he's like talking like he knows knows everything, and he's even dressed the, the part. But, you know, like, you know, dude, you got to pay me this much. You know, it's going to be a dangerous job. And he throws a knife, and he's trying to hit it on target. He's way off. So, they're like, okay, that guy's full of shit because he can't, you know, he's just making shit up because he wants a paycheck. And uh, Robert Duvall's character ends up showing up late and uh, fashionably late. And he gets the job. And they end up, you know, going into Columbia and they have some trouble at first because they, they, you know, Gary Busey ends up funding the operation because uh, he's an avid big game hunter. And, uh, you know, he, at first, you know, when uh, Michael Shuffling and company, you know, of course, before they even decide to do this, they try to go to Washington and try to do all this, but they don't do jack shit. You have like a montage of of just that, just Michael Schroffling, you know, Corey and, and uh, Thomas F. Wilson and Rick Rossovich. I think just Thomas F. Wilson and Corey, you know, Corey and uh, Thomas F. Wilson's character, uh, Bob. And they just go all, they, you know, Corey and Bob, they end up going to Washington, D.C. and go to the government and they get the reach around. We're all like, oh, we're not doing anything. And, uh, of course. And, um, and then uh, you basically, they end up deciding, okay, we want to get Harry back. No one wants to do anything. We got to do it ourselves. And so that then they decide to, you know, get Gary Busey to help along, help out. Because they end up tricking him. Well, basically, uh, Glenn Frey calls him on his shit. Because he's all like not thinking about, you know, you need how much money? You need, what, $40,000? I ain't doing that. You know, that kind of thing. And then, he's, and then Glenn Frey's like... Uh, you know, it was like a really expensive, uh, uh, you know, wow, it's a real, some really big game you got here. Uh, how, how much do, do the hunting trips that, how much do these hunting trips cost you? And he's like, 
Ha <laughs> ha, you got me. You got me. And so then he, then Gary Busey tags along. And, you know, then they, you know, he's, he's the one funding the operation. So he's the one that ha handles the money. And then he ends up going on the plane, you know, ends up going on the plane with all the other guys. And they head to Columbia. And they need a car. And there's like a piece of crap. And it's like they're asking three grand for it. And, you know, of course, you know, Corey's like, three grand, you know, to, to you know, to Gary Busey. And Gary Busey's like, I ain't paying three grand for that piece of shit. <laughs> it was like, three grand. And, and then, of course, Robert Duvall's like, where else are you going to find a car? Does this look like a dealership to you? Is there any dealerships around here? I don't think so. So, you know, you, you, we need a car. And he's like, okay, 3000 all right, three grand. He gives a three grand for this piece of shit. And then they end up getting chased because they, they're in the wrong... They're not supposed to be here. They're in Colombia legally anyway. They don't have any passports. They're getting chased by uh, these border cops. This border cops is a particular asshole. Like, he pulls them, off, pulls them over. And Robert Duvall, of course, is asked, like, throw weapons out. You know, grab that bag of weapons in it. Throw it out. And he throws it out of the car. And the guy pulls him over. And Robert Duvall can speak Spanish. So he's speaking to the guy. And he's like, oh, we're just tourists or whatever. The guy doesn't buy it. He's being an ass. And Robert Duvall's like, uh, you know, I got some money for you. He's got like a hundred dollar bill in his waist. And the guy ends up punching Robert Duvall in the face, like hard, leaving like a you know a bloody street, you know, like cutting his cheek open. And then he grabs the hundred dollar bill. He's like stupid Americans. And then they start driving away. And then he ends up pulling up in front of them again. And he pulls out his gun. And he's like aiming at him, like he's gonna shoot them. And of course, Thomas of Wilson and everyone in the car is like, "Oh shit! No! 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 No!" And then he ends. All he ends up doing is laughing his ass off and shoots the tires out. He's like, "You ain't going nowhere." The guy drives off, tack cackling, like, "What an asshole!" And then uh, they end up having to go by foot, and uh, they, they don't end up getting where they, you know, they end. They want to get some weapons. Robert Duvall thinks he's gonna got a friend of his, who ends up writing them out. They end up getting thrown in jail. They end up getting out of jail eventually. Um, uh, but with, you know, some struggle and then what happens is, and it's kind of like, I, I think like they end up trying to, you know, do things that try to get in there on their own. They end up getting contacted by this ambassador. Oh, they got out because this ambassador guy from the U S got them out of jail before they were going to get executed pretty much. And he's, he's going to give them a ride home. That's from Rick Rosevich. Puts his tail between his legs like a bitch and then leaves. And uh, the other guys end up getting off the plane, but he stays on the plane. Or, you know, Robert Duvall's like, get off the plane. He's like, and even like even his friends are like, come on, you pussy, let's go. And it's like, you know, no, 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 I can't, I can't do it. Ah. And so they all get off the plane, you know, because they want to save Harry. But you know, Rick Rochevich stays behind. But he actually does a little. He tries to fight back, so he does do something. Because the guys are trying to shoot at his friends, and he ends up trying to fight back. So we, but then he gets his ass knocked out, like with the butt of the gun. So it's like really, he doesn't really do that much. Um, but I guess the F uh, uh, Thomas F. Wilson, his character uh, ends up like smack. He, he uh, falls on the tarmac, you know, because they do they jump off the plane, and he really fucks up his leg. Bob. Thomas F. Wilson. And it almost looks like Thomas F. Wilson actually really did break his foot or break his leg doing this stunt. I don't know if it's really... It, it, it probably, maybe it was just a stuntman and it was just a, a stage thing, but it really did look like when he rolled... When he when he rolled out... He was supposed to get out of the plane, the moving plane on the runway. With the way he landed, it really did look like he fucked up his leg. So the rest of the movie, Thomas F. Wilson is limping around. And it almost doesn't look like it's just normal just like whatever you know i almost want to ask thomas and wilson like dude like did you actually break your foot like did you do that stunt jumping out of the plane and let's get hairy because it really does look like you know you really did break your leg or break your foot you know get, you know jumping out of that plane um but anyway he he's hobbled and now Robert Duvall is training these guys the ropes to show on. He, he got them some weapons, but only bet you know basically got them some easy weapons to, to you know to to learn the Uzis. And uh, then you get some actually pretty good action sequences. I thought nice bits of gunplay. These guys try to they find the hideout. 
They're like the outskirts of, of, of Ochavar's hideout. Ochavar is the drug dealer guy, and he's played by this actor named uh, Golomaro Rios, who I thought actually wasn't like originally. Like when first I was like, oh, pff, this guy's a joke. But second time around, I'm like, you know, he's charismatic. He's a, he's a fun villain because he's different. He's he's a shrimp, but he's different. He's unique. And not in a bad way. So anyway, he ends up, you know, they end up getting a little bit of a firefight, you know. Uh, Gary Busey fucks up some guys. There's definitely good blood squibs. And um, people bitching about how unrealistic this movie is. Like, oh, the final, uh, blah, 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 everything's unrealistic. I'm like, this is a movie. It's not a fucking documentary. It's not based on a true story about some guys from Illinois who hire some mercenary for hire guy going to Columbia illegally and, and you know, get some guns and kick some ass and save their friend. This isn't a real story, you dumbasses. I'm sorry. Criticizing this movie for having unrealistic fu- action sequences is, is is just bullshit. It's a bullshit reasoning. It's, a, it's bullshit. It, it really is. It's fucking bullshit. Because a lot of that was. Like, in general, the film is viewed poor as poorly written and executed. Because many of the scenes are rather unrealistic. And the men, who none of whom have any training, are able to kill dozens of Ochoa's men and destroy his camp with improvised bombs. Which is fine! Who cares? It's a movie! Come on! It's not real life! So anyway, you know, they have this whole scene where a decent firefight, you know, outside of Ochoa's camp. And... This is where the movie, it really, it pisses me off because, you know, you know, this is a scene where Shrike is kicking some ass, Robert Duvall is fucking people up, shooting them and shit, and Jerry Carabus is kicking ass, Glenn Frey shooting people, all these people are kicking some ass, you know, even Michael Schofling, Pretty Boy, is gunning away some bad guys, but here you have Thomas F. Wilson biffs like, ah, ah, and what happens is, Shrike ends up getting killed. He ends up getting shot full of a bunch of rounds and dies because Thomas F. Wilson's a pussy. He's like, uh, uh, I can't do it. I can't. Uh. They're like, shoot. And you're like, uh. and the man did he could have shot ends up shooting Robert Duvall and killing him. So I think that's bullshit. If you want to talk about poorly written, I agree with that in that in that in that uh, sense because that's bullshit. You don't kill off essentially your lead in this movie. Like that. Like, that's not even a heroic death. It's just like, oh, he dies because some other guy's a, a bitch. Great. Biff, you asshole. Like I said, you butthead. Would you make like a tree and get out of here with that pussy bullshit? So, anyway, Shrike's dead now. And so now they gotta do it on their own. So, I understand they wanted to set it up. So, now that these, you know, these working class guys are going to have to do it on their own and save their friend. I understand that, but you could have done it a lot better. Have Shrike die an honorable death. Like Gary Busey. Yep, Gary Busey ends up dying too. Ah. Uh, but he doesn't die, you know, I thought he died admirably though. You know, he insults the the the, the drug dealer guy, Ochavar, and he ends up getting gunned down, but he ends up shooting some fuckers, you know, and it gets the last laugh, so to speak, before he gets shot. Shrike, nope, 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 arguably the best character, not arguably, the best character on the film, nope, he gets some bullshit, uh, shot, you know, dies against, slumped against a tree, and Thomas of Wilson's like, ah, I could have shot, I'm sorry, of course, then Thomas of Wilson makes up for it later in the film, he ends up shooting some people, and, and uh, blows, you know, uh, sets up some bombs and stuff. The people are bitching about the makeshift bomb scene, like what they do in the end. All they did, this is something that anybody could fucking do. Are you kidding me? Make a Molotov cocktail. I'm going to take some gasoline and put a, a uh, you know, a, 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 a cotton, you know, put a towel in there and I'm going to light it on fire. How fucking hard is that? And then they do some stuff that's like, really? It's not that hard, the makeshift bombs that some people are bitching about when they're criticizing this movie. And also the whole idea of these guys going around shooting people... You know, that's the whole point of the movie. If, you, if you're if you bitching about the whole point of the movie is that these working class guys are going to get band together and save the day, then what the fuck movie were you expecting to watch? And why are you watching Let's Get Harry? And why are you bitching about shit that's going on in a movie 
that's essential to the plot. It's a movie about guys who, friends of this guy, Harry, Mark Harmon, who band together, go to Columbia illegally to kick ass and save their friend. It's simple. It's to the point. That's it. And that's a problem. Because it's so unrealistic that these guys can shoot guns. And they're like, oh, they're like very good in combat. All they're using is Uzis. They're not using sniper rifles or some complicated fucking weaponry. They're using Uzis. Anybody can use an Uzi. Anybody can point an Uzi at some drug dealers who are shooting at them. It's not like these drug dealers were mercenaries. It's not like these drug dealers they were facing off against were guys who were, were in the army or some shit. Or, you know, anything like that. They do look like chubby <laughs> fucking Colombian drug dealer, you know, guys. Some of them were out of shape. Like, it's not that far-fetched that these young guys could use fucking guns and fuck these guys up. Or in Gary Busey's case, he uses a blow dart. Because he's he knows how to use it because he's you know he he does a lot of hunting, you know on you know vacations he goes on hunts and stuff like that. So it's not that far fetched. And for, first off, it's also a movie. So shut the fuck up. So I gotta say I'm sorry. I hate criticisms like that. I might have done that before in the past, but I I'm not gonna do that anymore with movies. Okay, when it comes to that sort of thing, I'm not gonna go there. I'm not going to go there with, that's unrealistic. I'm going to go, I'm like, that's, it's a movie. Okay, did it entertain me? Yep, it did. So, who get, who gives a fuck if it's realistic or not? So anyway, I like the showdown at the end. There's a good amount of gunplay. There's, you know, practical blood squibs. Some, you know, decent amount of action. You know, to get to see Tom Biff shoot some people. Stop being a pussy. Uh, even Michael Schroffling shoots some people. Gary Busey was pretty badass, and ultimately, you know, they save Harry. And uh, but there's like a kind of really a crappy fight between Michael Schaffling, Corey, and, uh, and Och Ochavar, like one of those like underwater type struggle. Oh, I'm gonna strangle you and stab you underwater when you're not looking. And then he gets up and he's got a knife in his back. And he falls down dead. Lame. That's another part of the movie that could have been better. The death of the main bad guy was really lame. It reminded me of the lame ending of Navy Seals. I still love Navy Seals, but yeah, that is a lame way for Navy Seals to end too. With Charlie Sheen drowning this bad guy underwater. You know, really anticlimactic. But anyway, they save Harry. You know, they come home and hey, end of movie. They saved Harry. They got Harry. Although Shrike died like, you know, you know, didn't die the hero's death he deserved. And Gary Busey dies, but at least his character died an honorable death. But still, you know, there's a lot of gunplay. There's a good amount of action. Uh, there's a nice, unique sort of quality to the film because you have this eclectic group of characters. You have a musician turned actor in Glenn Frey, who isn't the worst thing ever. Like I said, he's not a great actor, but he, I've seen worse. Michael Shuffling, a pretty face, but he has some moments. Mark Harmon does a good job a little bit that he's in there. Robert Duvall is badass in this. He he doesn't he is you know his character does not get the the honorable heroic death that he deserves because Thomas F. Wilson is a butthead and uh, Corey's a butthead. Not not Corey. It's uh, the other guy. Corey is uh, uh, Bob is a butthead in this and so but but you know. And uh, Rick Rossovich is a pussy. Glenn Frey kicks more ass than Rick Rossovich. But uh, other than that, I mean, uh, you know, the villain, he's hes charismatic. There's even a scene where he's talking about Mark Harmon. He's like, you know, uh, do you want to do something to eat? You know, I, I'm just... You know, I'm, I'm I'm not the first kind of guy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all this... I'm, you know, selling all of this drugs for education for my family. You know, he's even admitting stuff. Like, he's, I'm doing it for my kids. You know, of course, he's just probably talking on his ass. I don't even know if he has kids or not. But, you know, I didn't mind the guy this time around. I thought he was unique. It was a different sort of uh, uh, casting for a villain like this. And, um... But, yeah, like I said, it doesn't make, you know, just like The Rescue, it's not a spectacular film. It's nothing that's amazing. It's not amaze balls. It's not like, oh, my God, this is the best thing ever. But I do think it's worth a watch. I do think this should be on DVD officially. 
because it's just look at the cast. You know, Robert Duvall, Mark Harmon, Gary Busey, Rick Rossovich, you know, of course, you know, but Gary Shoffling, not really anything much of anything, or Glenn Frey. But for Robert Duvall, I mean, this should be on DVD. This, I, I would say this is one of my favorite roles of his, is, is as Shrike, even though he dies a dishonorable death. Still one of my favorite characters that he's played. And I think it's definitely worth a look for people who are fans of 80s action movies. It's pretty much forgotten about. Nobody talks about Let's Get Harry. And there's another thing about the film I really like as well. And probably one of the things I really, really do like about the movie. And it's something that really did grow on me. And I, I ended up liking it anyway after the first time I saw it. But the second time around, I really like the I really like this. The score by Brad Fidel. I really love the score for Brad Fidel in this movie, especially the main theme. Main theme. Da, 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 So yeah, I really did. I really did like that main theme. And yeah, even though some of the guys that I like die. Hey, Uncommon Valor has people like Blaster dies, Red Brown dies. You have, uh, uh, you also have Randall Tex Cobb dies. You know, I think that you know, and, and it's you know, it sucks. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot, of, and even in the end, Gene Hackman doesn't find his son. His son's dead. So the whole purpose he went in with his his old pals from Vietnam to save was to save his son. And he went down to Vietnam to save his son. His son's dead. So, but that film works. It's a great movie. And I don't let that kind of thing ruin the movie. And here, you know, some of the guys I like die. But doesn't ultimately, at the end of the day, it doesn't kill the movie for me. And to be honest, the more and more I think about Let's Get Harry, the more and more I really do enjoy the movie. I'd probably say it's better than The Rescue. I'm not going to say it's on par with The Rescue. That'd be... That'd be too bad. That that would be a disservice to this movie. I will say it right off the bat. Underrated 80s action flick that more people should check out. It's just a fun, no frills, entertaining action movie with these guys who band together with the help of Robert Duvall to kick some ass and save their friend. It's very self-explanatory. It's to the point. And there's some fun action sequences. And yes, there are some problems. Robert Duvall should not have died like a bitch. Other than that, at the end of the day, you know, maybe the death of the drug dealer guy, but maybe at the end of the day, really enjoyable, fun flick, and probably the best movie directed by Alan Smithy. Uh, but anyway, I really don't know what to say about Let's Get Harry, except that, yeah, I'd recommend it. Like, give it a look. You know, if you're a fan of these guys, these actors, Robert Duvall, Gary Busey, Mark Harmon, if you want to see Glenn Frey try to act, um... But it's just a really fun. It's a it's a good cast. They're likable, the whole way it's set up. I not not realistic. Who gives a fuck? Good action sequences are pretty. I thought were pretty good. N nice little bits of gunplay, in the film, and um, just an enjoyable experience. And you know, just definitely you know a typical sort of eighties movie. That's a little bit corny, but a lot of eighties movies are. But that adds to their charm. And yeah, but yeah, more and more I think about this movie. I, I like this movie. I really do. I really like Let's Get Harry. And um, I'd really like to get this officially on DVD. So I have the great quality version I can watch on streaming and I could watch on my computer, but I can't burn it because it has some copyright crap encoded into it. Yeah, you try to burn it, it'll be like all digital and fucking bars and shit. Yeah, thanks a lot, Amazon. You pay all that money for a digital copy, and it's like, oh, fuck you. You can't do anything with it. You can only watch it on Windows Movie Media Player. You can't watch it on your hard drive. Fuck you. Um, which is like, oh, thanks. Uh, I'd rather you just send me a DVD-R. But anyway, um, I'll, I'll rip the Laserdisc, and, and I'll have that at least. But anyway, I really don't know what to say about Let's Get Harry, except... I really enjoyed it. I really did. The more and more I'm thinking about it, I really, really do like this movie. And uh, the first time around, I didn't care for it. So it's another movie that, second time around, it grew on me. So here's another one I can add to the list of movies that I didn't like the first time around, but the second time around I watched it, I liked it. So yes, things do can change. Opinions can change. This movie, my opinion on this movie now is proof of that. 
And I really don't know what to say, folks, except uh, thanks for watching my review of Let's Get Harry. And also, check this movie out. If you don't like it, fine. You know, but it, it, at least you'll understand that it is a unique uh, little bit of 80s action, you know, uh, that barely nobody knows about and nobody's talking about. And it pretty much disappeared off the face of the earth, despite being coming out at the height of Mark Harmon's popularity when he was on St. Elsewhere. And it's still bombed. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. See ya.